So basically today, um, my talk is about experiences and the human experience and how, I know as humans we learn from our own experiences, but in reality we also learn from other people's experiences. So that's something I really want to talk about today. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys really like it. I don't know what yeah, to say. We will. Okay, so we've heard this saying since we were like two, don't judge a book by its cover. And to be honest, I think I was less judgmental when I was little. I mean, like, since we have conceptions now or like we just, I, I feel like I judge people, like when I see a homeless person on the street and they're gonna ask me for money, I'm not gonna lie, I'll move like farther from the sidewalk kind of a thing. And um, no, no, I don't wanna be mean, but I'm trying to be honest here. So um, this talk, I wanted to break that like stereotype, that idea that we shouldn't really have um, conceptions about someone before we talk to them or before we meet them. Because you really never know what someone's been through until you hear from them. Um, so, let's see. I'm really nervous, sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> How many of you guys have talked to like a homeless person or a stranger like recently, like a full-on conversation? Three out of like the 40 of us in here. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm like the same way. I don't think I've really talked to someone like that I didn't know, but um, I'm assuming a lot of you guys have seen the video with, um, what is it, The Man with the Golden Voice? Oh, hold on, sorry. There it is. Is there any way you could move the... Never mind. <laughs> make it big. Hey, we're going to make you work for your dollar. Say something with that great radio voice. When you're listening to nothing but the best of oldies, you're listening to Magic 98.9. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. it's not oh, sorry. But I think most people have seen that video, and I think that's just the epitome of what it means not to judge a book by its cover. Um, this is Dabby, sorry. And that picture on the bottom right is him, actually, um, in his mugshot. And he was homeless for a really long time before someone discovered and gave him the opportunity to show off his like God-given talent. Um, so, so before we go on, let's see. This next quote, I got it from a friend, but if you lived a life without regrets, then you haven't made the right mistakes. And I think that's really true. I know we go out and we try to live a life without making our regrets. But the thing is, those regrets is probably what forms us and makes us stronger as people. Um, <laughs> So as leaders in this room, my whole TED Talk is about challenge, challenging you guys, and my challenge for you today is to try and give your family, friends, and strangers an opportunity to tell you about themselves. I mean, yeah, we have our coffee breaks and whatever, but have, give each person like 20 minutes to talk about themselves. Um, what makes them think the way they do? I mean, we call people douchebags, but why are they being a douchebag? And why are they being standoffish? Why are they, like, why are they really rude? There's probably a reason why behind everything kind of a thing. Um, so what has made a person choose a certain path of way, and why do they react the way they do? Um, so chances are that these negative qualities, they're not really done to offend you, but they've been through something, and that's why people are really like the way they are. Um, so today, I'm gonna do my own experiment on you. Since you guys have um, pretty much given me your time of day, I didn't ask for it, you're kind of forced to sit here, but <laughs> I'm gonna do this experiment on you. For the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna tell you what I would tell you if you gave me 15 minutes for you, just to have coffee or something. So um, just to start, my name is Adrian Charlotte Yam, and I'm 21 years old. Woo! Um, thank you. <laughs> I'm from Roland Heights, California, which is like 40 minutes east of here. Um, it's really Chinese and Asian. The food's awesome, but I grew up in a really bad driving town thing. Um, I have a younger sister. <laughs> I have a younger sister who looks older than me. Um, her name's Charlene, and we're like Biffs. Uh, I don't know what I'd do without her. I have a dog named Pudgy Patrick Yam, and um, they got him right when I moved out to college, so he was my replacement. And I'm Filipino Chinese, just some basics that I would like to tell you. Um, so, oh, um, basically, I'm a business major. I concentrate in MOR or management operations, and I really focus on managing and developing people. So, this is my job when I graduate. Um, this is my family's company. My dad started it 25 years ago, it's a wholesale meat and seafood company. Um, it's basically the definition of an American dream. So he came from he came here from the Philippines, and um, yeah, he bought some cheap meat in downtown, and he went store to store trying to sell it. <coughs> and he started his own company. He started from a pickup truck to a little big truck to a small building, medium building, and to that building we have right now, which is about two blocks wide. Um, it's about it's 25 years old. Um, we have about 40 employees, and yeah, that's my job after I graduate. Um, I can only hope to like dedicate as much as he did and hopefully 
you know, preserve his honor and everything. Um, so if you guys ask me, um, everybody kind of has that one or two experiences in their life that kind of changes them, that kind of makes them who they are and like everything they've learned from it, that's like what forms you as a person. Um, okay, I don't want to get like sappy, but my most defining experience was actually really sad for me. Um, so my dad um, passed away in what was it, 2004, about seven years ago, and I'm just going to tell you how it went just because this is what's changed me, this is what's made me as a person. Um, he started having a headache, and it was a casual vi visit to the hospital. Um, we thought it was like a migraine, no big deal. So he went to get his CT scans and everything, and um, we found out he had an aneurysm. And for those of you guys who aren't like medically savvy, like it's basically a vein had like popped in your brain. So your brain starts to bleed, and that um, causes brain damage. So he needed surgery right away. Um, sorry, I don't want to cry. Um, Basically, he, yeah, he went into surgery that next hour, and if we didn't do it, he was going to die, so no matter what, he had to do it. Um, and in that next hour, he had to say, like, whatever, like, the goodbyes and whatever. And the way they said that, they, the way the doctors made it feel like it wasn't a big deal, uh, we thought he was going to be fine after. But I had 10 minutes with my dad before he, like, went into surgery, and he was super optimistic. I mean, he was crying because he was scared, but he was telling me, like, I love you, it's going to be fine, don't worry, honey, and whatever. And I just and he told me a couple things that like to this day I remember like how he held my hand and everything. Um, first off, take care of your family, um, your mom and sister. Like that's your like primary thing. Um, just you know finish school, graduate college. Um, and I just remember believing like just thinking, oh this is not gonna happen. He's not gonna die. Like there's no way. Um, he's had two heart operations before this and something else. And he made it through, so this is like not his time. Um, so I just said good luck to him, and I said we had so much to look forward to. We just had bought Lakers season tickets, um, and that's all I could say. All I could say was good luck, and you're going to be fine, and you're like really strong. Don't worry about it. And little did I know that those would be my last words to him. Um, sorry. So he gets out of surgery, and like. And he seemed, every, the doctors say everything's like fine with him and like um, he's gonna be okay and he'll wake up in a couple hours. So I go home to sleep and I take my sister home to sleep and we come back the next day and we're like, oh my God, he's gonna wake up, let's go see him. And he doesn't wake up that day and we're thinking, okay, he's just like really tired from this surgery, so it's fine, he'll wake up tomorrow. Um, he doesn't wake up that day and he won't wake up. He doesn't wake up that week for the second week, third week and the fourth week because um, he was stuck in a coma. So, I mean, we tried everything. Um, we put an iPod in his ears. We put his favorite music on there. We just, like, we tried everything. And by the fourth week, it was at that point where he couldn't breathe on his own. He had to go on a ventilator. Um, and his body started to deteriorate. I mean, his body organs started to fail. His brain started to bleed again, so he'd have to go into surgery. And it was an option for us to either keep him and, like, he'd be a vegetable, or we had had to let him go and... I mean, let him go. And, like, look, I didn't know this, but he made my mom promise before he went into surgery that if he was going to be a vegetable, we'd have to let him go. So we kept our promise, and we, gave, we let him go after a month in the hospital. I don't want to be like, sorry. Um, but I'm not telling you guys for, like, pity. I just, like, want to say that this is probably what changed my life. This is what's made me me. Um, Let's see, what, what did I learn in these four weeks? This, these four weeks was like strength I've never imagined I had. Um, I was a sophomore in high school at that time and optimism was at the highest. I had, like, I had hope, I, you know, I was really strong. Like, I don't think I've ever seen my strength at that point. Um, maturity, for a high school sophomore, like, I don't think kids in high school ever really experience something like that. So maturity, I think, I think that's where I get it from. Um, just like respect for people. I get it from my mom, my mom, like, she handled my dad's death. I mean, that should be bad enough, but she not. She put my sister and me through private school all the way to college. Um, my, I, my sister and I have never stepped foot in a public school. Not that it's bad, but that's just how my mom, like, she worked on it for us. Um, she ran our business, and we just had moved to a new building. Um, yeah, and I think that's where I get a lot of my strength and, like, just my personality in general. Um, I learned how to take care of my emotions, not exactly hide them, but just 
you know, let them out when it's right. I could not cry. I knew in front of my mom, sister, or grandma, like straight up can't cry because it hurts them more to cry. So I had to cry when it was away from them. So I think it's just these kind of experiences have really changed me. Um, one of the biggest things I've gained is humility. Um, we're not invincible from tragedy. Like, you know, I, I'm not saying we're like perfect, but I don't think I deserve a, like a dad's death. I don't think anybody deserves a death like that. And I think humility is a really big thing, and that's why it's one of my biggest core values that I live by. Um, sympathy and concern for others. A lot of people always say I'm like really soft and like don't let people walk over me, but I can't. I can't. Even I don't, if I don't like you as a person, I'm not gonna let someone be mean to you just because it's not. It's uncomfortable for me, and I hate see, being um, seeing someone really mean to someone else, kind of a thing. And so I think that's where I've developed my biggest like concern for other people. And so as this whole experience, I'm gonna move on to half of your stuff, sorry, you guys are like so dead silent right now, so it's gonna be like shake. Um, this whole experience, like this big one experience has helped guide my life and my life is about living life now. Um, and it sounds cliche, but that's what it is.